Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. Hey there, and welcome to a new episode of Why Not 3. Today we're going to be talking about how to have a work-life balance when you have no time to sleep. And I'll be comparing supplements versus the biohacking gear. And it's really nice that it ties in right now because I actually wanted to share the new experiments that I'm trying out uh, for hacking my stress and sleeping better. And currently what I'm doing, what I actually started doing again, is getting uh, water with Himalayan sea salt. It's the pink sea salt that you can get in, well now it was in any store. When I first started my biohacking gear, uh, my whole biohacking experience, I had to go to these really sketchy neighborhoods to find really alternative biological stores. And there I could um, get that Himalayan sea salt. But nowadays you can pretty much find it anywhere depending on which location you're in. So what does this uh, give me? It, In some way, and you can, you can find the research, I'm not going to devote too much time on it, but it biohacks, um, it replenishes uh, your stress levels. And so you are able to cope with more. If you really want to go deeper into the whole research, I wrote a blog post about it, you can Google for it. And just type in Himalayan sea salt with water every morning. You'll find probably something from us or from Dave Asprey or from Tim Ferriss. Um, I actually saw his morning routine and I know that for a while he was doing the same. So this water with sea, with uh, Himalayan sea salt really helps uh, lately with my stress levels, especially because we're really going up and scaling up also the second company. So it's become even more stressful to manage everything, even though we have a bigger team right now. Uh, but overall, it helps me sleep better. It helps me be more alert and more focused. Now, another thing that I really noticed today, uh, because I'm in Germany, in two days I'm leaving to another country. But right now, I noticed there's this water called Saint Giro or something like that. And apparently it's uh, a healing water that Germans just sell in the in the supermarket. And the reason it popped up is because, first of all, it's in a glass container, so it's not it's BPA-free. You don't have the same stuff happening with Pellegrino because those bottles are not BPA-free. And BPA raises your uh, estrogen levels, which is something you don't want to have when you're drinking water. Uh, so, And also, it has apparently very good magnesium levels. So in essence, you're drinking water with a little bit higher uh, magnesium levels, which is exactly what I need because most of the most of my issues come from magnesium deficiency. That's why I always, even when I was writing the outline for this podcast, I wrote down, if you have sleeping problems, try supplementing with magnesium. For most of my clients and for me, it worked really, really well. And I even wrote a blog post about it where I said, um, look, start with magnesium and then if that doesn't work, switch to GABA. Now, GABA is a hormone that we have naturally, but... There isn't enough research to tell us what it actually does when you supplement with GABA. And it's a really funny story. When I first discovered GABA, I went to the pharmacy to get GABA. And I asked them, uh, because they usually have transcripts and you can ask for it. And I asked them, can you give me the full transcript for GABA? Because I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, except that it really helps with calming you down. So uh, the lady got me the transcripts of GABA and this was the first time I've ever seen it. But um, at at scientific research, the line of scientific research and side effects, it literally said no conclusive research found. And I was standing in the pharmacy and the woman, (laughs) she herself didn't even know what GABA was. Um, I discovered it from Dave Asprey on the Bulletproof Diet and have since then um, used it with success. Um, And the way I compare GABA and the way I explain GABA is, imagine you had your best sleep ever. So GABA kind of stimulates that if you have a deficiency of it. Now, because of the lack of scientific evidence, I always say, worst case scenarios take GABA, just because there isn't enough conclusive research. The only thing we know is that it's a natural hormone. But again, your body always looks for homeostasis. So we don't know if you, if you would supplement with too much GABA that it would uh, ruin your natural balance. So here and there, once in a while, if you take GABA, I don't think it can matter that much. It's uh, for sure better than melatonin, 
which can completely screw up your biorhythm. So I always advise magnesium or GABA and get a proper uh, evening routine. And uh, yeah, and apparently here in Germany, you can just get water with magnesium levels. That way, if you're drinking throughout the day, uh, your magnesium levels are not low and probably you'll fall asleep better. And yeah, then we go into the second tip, which is um, going a little bit more into the biohacking uh, sphere now, which is the easiest and the, and the cheapest because it's free. Use a sleep application. And nowadays they're free. When I, when I started with this whole thing, um, they had, I'm forgetting the name, but they had this machine, which is 500 bucks and you had to wire, uh, electrodes to your brain. And then you, you had to sleep with that. And it, it was horrible for me. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So, uh, I was super happy when a couple of months later, or I think a year later, um, sleeping tracking apps became really popular on, on the app store and the prices dropped. And so I downloaded, um, you can download any sleep app at this point and it will work really well. Um, and you can uh, type in there that you want to wake up within a 30 minute window of a certain time. And the sleeping app will track your sleep and wake you up during that time. Now, I also added to that an alarm clock that stimulates light. So that really helps. It uses sound and light. And then I have the sleeping application as an additional alarm. So, yeah, that's that's really useful, especially if you're interested into the whole biohacking stuff, because that sleeping app also tracks your sleep. So you'll know exactly what your optimal times are to go to bed and when your optimal times are to wake up so that you can uh, adjust accordingly to fall asleep. And then we go into the third tip, which is the most extreme tip. And this is uh, when you're sleeping less than five hours, five hours or else or else I just don't recommend this. Um, and it's something that um, not many people know this exists, but I call it assess machine. And I've shared it on a 30 day challenge and I show exactly what the container looks like. Um, I have a very basic one. Uh, like I said, I'm not uh, at the level of biohacking where I'm literally biohacking every little step of myself. Um, so I have the Cess Ultra. It's you cannot adjust the frequencies for me. It's only um, what was it? Delta uh, waves that it gives, which uh, stimulates deep sleep. Uh, some some of my friends, biohacker friends have um, a SES machine that is adjustable in frequency so they can stimulate different uh, waves like gamma for creativity and focus and alpha waves and beta waves for uh, focus. Uh, so what is a CES machine? So a CES machine is a cerebral electrostimulation machine. And it pretty much is exactly what it sounds. You attach electrodes to the earlobes and you turn it on. And depending on which frequency it is, mine is a very simple one. So definitely it goes straight into uh, delta waves. So depending on which frequency you have, it'll send electro electronic shocks to your brain to adjust its ways to fall asleep better and more efficient. It was first developed, um, this is what the, what the box says and, and what, what the research says on, online as well. So it was first developed for uh, cosmonauts uh, in, in Russia to make their sleep more efficient so that they wouldn't have to spend so much time sleeping when they were um, in, in space. So the reason I say only use this uh, with a maximum, if you only had five hours or less sleep is just because at the end of the day, when I use a CES machine, I am very alert and everything, but somehow I feel that sometimes it's best that you do sleep uh, your natural biorhythm instead of completely hacking everything about it. You can of course maintain it and your body will be fine with it. Uh, but I try not to send too much electronic shocks to my brain as there is almost not that much research about it. Now, that being said, there is research about the CES machine um, and they say it is safe, especially the frequencies that you have there. Um, it is approved. You In some countries, you need a prescription for it. Um, and it's been in our market for more than 50 years and there's no conclusive evidence that, of course, it, it has really severe side effects or any of those that I actually heard. But that being said, again, 
Um, I don't use it all the time. I'd rather have a really good biorhythm where I sleep naturally a little bit less um, or that I can operate um, on my own uh, on little sleep. Uh, but the SES machine is my go-to device when I have less than five hours of sleep because I'd rather be um, in really good deep sleep and very efficient deep sleep uh, when I am, for instance, on a conference. And I'll be speaking at a conference next month. Uh, and again, it's a four-day conference with one day of pre-meeting. So those are some of those conferences I sleep sometimes two to three hours a day. And in order to maintain... Um, my ability to give proper workshops, uh, those magnesium, GABA, my sleeping app, my SES machine, those are the things that I use actually to keep me going and being alert while everybody's falling asleep. Uh, so yeah, those are the three things, the supplements, again, magnesium and GABA, although now I start picking up again, drinking water with Himalayan sea salt, which I used to do when I had a burnout uh, a long time ago. Uh, it helped really um, with getting me out of that burnout. So I would definitely advise to do that as well. Uh, this new water, St. Giro, if you're in Germany, I'm, I'm not affiliated to it. I just discovered it, but it seems really interesting because I can't seem to get my hands on water that has that much magnesium in it. Um, so that is that. And then tip number two was use a sleep tracker because it'll find an optimal time for you to wake up and it'll give you data to know when you should go to sleep and when you should be waking up um, so that instead of thinking that you are natural, you can actually adjust your natural biorhythm. And then the third thing in most extreme cases, if you're on a conference or I don't know, you're going to sleep less than five hours and you know that you need to be alert for some kind of pitch or uh, something really high pressure, then you can use a SES machine. Um, you will see with, together with your, with your sleep tracking app that uh, you will have way more deep sleep thanks to that SES machine. But again, check, your, check everything with your doctors because the SES machine in some countries um, is only on prescription. So with that being said, I'm so happy that you've been here with me. Uh, we've been releasing episodes every day. And if you have any questions, let me know. You can send me a personal email uh, once you sign up to the 30-day challenge. It's my personal email. I keep uh, no assistant there uh, just because I understand how personal some of the problems are. And I devote all of my time to uh, answering each one of you. So, yeah, with that being said, have a good week. We're almost finishing up our week. I'm uh, moving away from the snowy country to a more warm country in a couple of days and i'll see you tomorrow